Hi guys, this is Brandon with Fold Up Games. How in the world are you doing today? I am great, and thank you so much for asking. Uh, today we're going to do a topic called game structure. This is not something that we're going to actually be building out games, but it's a really important fundamental conceptual kind of a thing. I think a lot of people are missing this, uh, and they wind up making a lot of newbie mistakes or just getting lazy in the way they set things up. Uh, so hopefully this will help you avoid a lot of common errors and get you off making games in an organized way, uh, kind of put you ahead of the curve. Some other advanced designers may have other ways that they do things. People may do things differently from me. That's fine. Uh, there's no right or wrong way, but this is a pretty common approach. So uh, let's go ahead and jump in here. The first thing we're going to look at is room setup, the overall structure of the game and how I organize things. We'll look at object and sprite names. I think that's one that people miss a lot of times. We'll look at parent objects essential objects that I use a lot, and scripts. We'll just touch on that really quick. We're not doing a, a training on scripts. This is it. This is the overview of how I essentially set up games. Uh, you can get a look at this, put this in your head, and then go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and have a great day. Uh, <laughs> the splash screen is where, where everything starts out. Uh, this is where it's not just your logo up there. You're going to do some background stuff, making sure that we're setting up views so that it's matching the device that you're on. You're going to be able to do loading of save data and setting up any essential objects that have just got to be there uh, for the rest of it, like a, a control object is something that's really common. From there, it will flow automatically into the title screen. This is going to be the central place that you're going to let your players go back to all the time because it's like the it's the grand central station of your video game. The title screen is super important. From there, you might have a some games might have a, a different menu screen from there, uh, but I, I tend to put a lot of stuff into the main title screen. I think people generally do that just so that you don't have too many main places to go to. From the title screen, if they hit quit, that means they really want to quit. Don't, don't get cute. Don't make it hard on them. Just let them quit. Uh, but uh, from there, they're going to want to go to settings, credits, instructions, that kind of thing. If there's any configuration uh, that you've got, from there, you're going to go out into all the main levels and cutscenes and all that kind of thing. They all interact with each other. If people are actually in the game, they're actually in the levels and they hit quit, they probably don't actually want to quit the game immediately. They probably say, hey, let me go back to the main screen. If you just dump them out of the game all of a sudden, that's probably not what they want. Do let them quit. Let them, you know, make that easy on them. But probably they want to quit to the main title screen again is what they really meant. So let's go ahead and look at Fold Up, which is available right now on the Android market and see the way that I did it. This is my game plan. Uh, if you get into a game and you think this is something I'm really going to tackle seriously and finish it, I really suggest that you come up with a game plan about the way it all fits together. Uh, this is something that I put together after I already had it kind of taking shape. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't stop and plan everything in advance. I got it up and running and then came up with this uh, to help me know when I was done making it. We can see that we have the logo intro and the preload, like I talked about, hits here. And then it goes to the title screen. The title screen becomes the main area where you can go to the level select. The level select then kicks you out into the individual levels. You can go to the help menu, tutorial, get info, credits, uh, go to a store page that allows you to do a little customization on your character. Uh, on Shieldworthy, there's, like I said, the character select. So any anything that's unique to your game that you need is going to be available off that main title screen. In this case, the, the levels, if you haven't hit them already, are going to have an intro. That's why I show you here there might be a cutscene that feeds back into the levels and the levels feed into the cutscenes. When you say, hey, I want to go to level one, page one, if you haven't actually... If you haven't actually done that level yet, it's going to run the intro and then put you back into it. That's a pretty common way to do those. I usually organize those to where they're all collected together. All the cutscenes are together, like at the end of the of the uh, the tree, at the end of the list. Uh, but you can put them wherever it makes sense for you. Uh, at any point, again, you notice here we have this pause button over here. There's an info overlay with a quit button and a pause button that lets them go back. You guessed it. Follow the little line here. It goes all the way back up to the title screen. And then from the title screen, if they hit that quit button, they really are going to quit uh, the whole game. So let's jump over to Shieldworthy. And I'll show you this uh, in action, the way I set it up. I've got the preload right here. This is where you get the main logo coming up. And I've got a couple essential objects that are loaded. From there, it's automatically going to take you into the title screen. 
So the way that I showed you in the organization, here are all the individual levels that I described in the PowerPoint. All the individual levels are here. So that's the main meat of the game. Uh, from there, we're going to have some different battles and things, but they're all their own, you know, parts of the game. It's the main uh, action of the game. This one doesn't have any cutscenes in it at this time, but if it did, I would just throw them in at the bottom, uh, just like I described in the in the presentation over here. All right, moving right along. Next section: objects and sprites. Guys, this is so important. If you're not doing this, start start now. Go back to your game and fix it. Go ahead. I'll wait. Go fix it right now. Do not call your objects just whatever game maker let them be called. Go ahead and take the trouble to name them. They should be called object underscore name or O name. People like to do that too. Sprites likewise are called SPR underscore name or S name, but we don't just let game maker name them sprite number 24. You'll never know what sprite number 24 is. You'll get confused. You'll spend half your time trying to track down, you know, which sprite and which object. The other thing that you would do that would be a huge mistake is just naming them player and player. Which one's the sprite and which one's the object? You know, you'll, you, you'll see it there in the tree in the side view, but Game Maker will have issues. So don't do that. So go ahead and go through the trouble as you go along to name things correctly. Object name, spurt name, <laughs> or S name. Uh, same things with sounds, you know, S and D underscore name of the sound. Uh, it's going to save you so much trouble. It's just one of those things. It's just good habit. You need to get into it and do it correctly. It's going to separate you from somebody who's just mussing around, just clicking on things like crazy, and somebody who's really organized and has a chance of finishing something. Okay. Next thing, parent objects. Parent objects is a great way to save yourself a lot of trouble. You might use solids, bad guys, NPCs. Uh, in the object, when you set it up, you can say who the parent is. Let me go click one real fast. I wasn't planning on doing this, but uh, see, I have folders too for controllers, for player elements, for bad guys, for room objects. So uh, yeah, like a cliff, the parent is object solid here. The cliff, when you hit it, is going to behave like object solid. If we go and pull up object solid, object solid isn't really uh, anything. It's just there. Uh, and it doesn't even draw itself. It's just used as a parent. It's an empty object that everybody refers back to. When something hits object solid, it behaves the same way across the board. You follow my meaning? Uh, so object solid might not even appear in the room. It's just a placeholder. And the real objects like cliffs, like doors, like rocks, like trees, all these things, they refer back to it and they behave in the way that object solid is telling them to. It's a great way for you to have one object but they all behave the same way same thing with bad guys all of my bad guys when the player comes across them their parent is enemy parent object enemy parent so when the player comes across object enemy parent He's going to hit him and he's going to react. He's going to get damaged and jump back. He's going to behave in certain ways around enemies. I have one enemy parent and anything that's an enemy refers back to it. So that's super useful to me as a designer because it helps me keep organized and I don't have to repeat things quite as often. All right, next up, I'd like to take a look at essential objects that I use all the time. First off is object command, O command, control, whatevs, whatever you want to call it, very important. This is a central object that's going to control pretty much the entire game. If your game was broken down into one object, it would probably be that. It's the one that gets called right there at the start in the splash screen. When the game starts, you're going to create object command. Object command is where I load global variables, save data, um, tracking what's going on in the game, what room you're in, uh, just anything that you need to know is going to be all the, all the time uh, in existence because the object command is persistent. Another object that I use a lot is a camera object. Uh, I did a whole video on that on manual view control. I could have given it a fancier name, I guess, uh, but a camera object is another really common one to do all the time. Of course, player objects, another common one is going to be a, a solid object object uh, and that'll be as I referred to here a solid object is the parent of structure ceilings walls floors trees you know logs <laughs> you name it last up let's take a quick look at scripts I use scripts uh, for a lot of great reasons one of the most common ones and if you haven't done scripts yet don't 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 freak out there's just another way to do code 
uh, another great a great thing about scripts is that it makes repeating code easier. I've got a code over in Shieldworthy called you know targeting code, and every single NPC, every bad guy uses that code, that targeting code, to know which player is closest to them, if anyone. So the script is going to say, do we have one player, two players, zero players, and if so, who's closest? Uh, that's the kind of thing that I'm going to need to repeat a lot and I've got one place to edit it. If I need to go back and fix that, I can just go back to the original script. And like everything else, I name it something reasonable. SCR underscore nearest target, and I've got some code in there. Uh, and rather than edit this again and again and again, I create it once. If I have a problem with this script later on in the game, I can fix it here. I don't have to go and track down every time that I use this, you know, on every on every uh, NPC and every bad guy and every, uh, you know, everything that might refer to it. I just edit it once and it fixes the entire game. So cool, so useful. I'd, re I'd recommend doing that. Now, you can tie in variables called arguments uh, with scripts, uh, but you don't have to. You can just go ahead and use it as is, as just a standalone piece of code and refer back to it again and again. Uh, so anyway, guys, hope that was useful. Hope that was helpful to you. Uh, you know, give the video a like if I did something wrong or if you've got a different way of doing things rather than giving me a thumbs down and just leaving in a huff, uh, go ahead and give me a comment. Let me know how you uh, would have done it, how I should have done it. Uh, if you've got tips that you'd like to share with everybody, let's build some community here. Uh, you guys have a great day and uh, let me know if the comments uh, in the comments if I can uh, answer some questions for you in the future or do another video. Have a great day.